Hi guys, Hold Bum here. Um, here in a, just a glorious part of the world, I'm at Kinkuna Beach, which is really only about 20 minutes to half an hour uh, from where I live at Bundaberg. And you know, I've never been camping here before, and I'm crazy. I should have been here years ago. Uh, won't hold me back and won't keep me away now. So tonight I'm doing burgers for dinner, but I want to have a bit of dessert tonight. So I'm going to make on the camp stove. Um, a simple and easy apple and cinnamon damper. Uh, I'll cook it up to, uh, today uh, and then I'll just warm it up in some alfoil on the fire tonight, have it with some cream and it's going to be absolutely fantastic guys. Um, so stick with me as we get into it. Apple and cinnamon damper. So guys, the first thing we're going to need is um, some self-raising flour. Uh, self-raising flour has got all the rising agents in it, and that's what we want. Self-raising flour, we want some brown, brown sugar. Uh, Going to use some skim milk powder. You have to apologise for the uh, camera angles and everything, guys. I'm on the beach here, and it is blowing a gale, so I hope the sound isn't too bad. Let's get uh, milk powder, of course wouldn't be apple and cinnamon damper without uh, some uh, pie fruit apple which is also great for uh, uh, apple crumble but I'll leave that for another day and of course wouldn't be cinnamon without the cinnamon so there we go guys that's the main ingredients we're going to use uh, and we're just going to cook it up in my little pot here and the trivet Guys, the first thing we're going to need is the flour. So, damper is pretty forgiving. You do not have to be accurate with its measurements. It's only rough, and there's only one of me, so I'm not making a big one. So, we want about a cup of flour. Now, if you're making it for more, of course, you add more. So, a cup of flour. Put in some good. Uh, I'm only using a dessert spoon, so probably about, I'd say, dessert. You've got to have it a bit sweet, so I'm going to go about four dessert spoons, tablespoons, and a little bit more for good luck um, of brown sugar. Then, there's roughly about three tablespoons of powdered milk to a cup. So I'm just going to put about three in. You don't have to use this even, you can just use straight water. A lot of people use lemonade uh, or mineral water. Ginger ale is another good one in here. Or ginger beer, gives a nice ginger flavour. all this dry stuff out of the way um, and this is my little camp salt shaker and it isn't the best but we're going to add this in a little bit of salt that's probably about a pinch of salt even though it looked like I was shaking for half an hour and then we're just going to mix these dry ingredients through I'm just using another one of my ca um, camping pots as a mixing bowl. Now, as you can start to see, all that brown sugar and everything is going to go through that. Oh, hang on, one more dry ingredient. The cinnamon. You're almost making apple and cinnamonless damper. So, probably only want about a teaspoon of this, guys. Trying to keep my arm out of the way of the camera and it's hard because the wind is blowing everywhere so there's that about a teaspoon again doesn't have to be accurate keep mixing that So 
sorry guys, just checking the camera. Keep mixing that. Now we're gonna stir in the apple. Now, I'm gonna put probably about half of this tin in. Um, depends how much apple you like. I like apple, so uh, I like food, period. So I'm gonna put about a half a tin of this. Just a uh, bit over, two thirds. That's all right. And we're gonna mix that through. And we're gonna just chop the, because the pie fruit apple is a bit chunky. Uh, we're just gonna chop it up a little bit. Um, if you wanted to get baby food apple, pureed apple, you could probably use that. I've only ever used this, so. You want to get them ingredients well incorporated. You want to get that apple evenly through the flour mix. As it cooks, the whole flavour of everything will go go through it all anyway. But still. I wonder how a dash of rum would go in this. As you can start to see, we're mixing that through. I'm just trying doing it slowly, guys, because it's pretty windy here and I don't want everything blowing everywhere. Although, at least I don't have to clean up. And as you go see guys, it's pretty sloppy, so you will not have to move, mix a lot of liquid into this at all. I'll be making this quite damp, a lot of people like to make it dry, but it will have a little bit of kneading on it. And actually I don't even think I'll need to add any water. So in other words, I might even put a little bit more flour in there, so guys, just to dry it out a little bit, it's a bit damp. And I'll have some of my milk. Mother's milk. This is a good thing about damper guys. You can just adjust it as you go. You don't have to be precise with it. And actually, years ago, traditionally, it was just made with plain flour and baking powder or bicarbon, bicarbonate soda. And uh, yeah, that's looking better now. That's looking much better. Gotta taste that. that dough as it is. And guys, we're just going to put that to the side. And we're just going to oh, sprinkle this. over here I'm just going to scoop this onto this plate here guys and we're just going to knead it a little bit nothing great a lot of people try and make damper like bread I don't, I like to make it just like a pile, almost like a cake bread cake Give her 
rough knee, nothing flashed, but it's covered in flour. And is going to come together and it's going to be pretty awesome. We're just going to sit back here for the minute. Ah, off me. Whilst we get some other stuff organised. Uh, so guys, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to attempt to lay some alfoil out on this table. Because you need to line the pan. Why won't you care? Put a pan with alfoil. Now, shiny side in guys I'm going to I'm just going to have to use my fingers here I'm going to smear this all with butter when you use an hour four guys always put the shiny stuff in towards the food I'm just going to put that butter in there like that It's going to be like a tea cup, guys. Put some apple on top. And what? Just another sprinkling of brown sugar. Okay guys, so that's the damper done. I'm just going to put another sheet of alfoil under it. Ah, it's going to happen now. Yeah, just a bit more. And... The reason I've got the trivet in there, as most people know when they're cooking with trivets, it just keeps it off the bottom. I would prefer a slightly deeper one. I don't have much choice. The only one I've got that will fit in this pot. And then we're going to whack it onto the uh, just the gas stove and just do it over a low heat till it cooks because I do not want to burn the bottom. Uh, normally 
I do this over my little hiking stove. Where is it? It's here buried under all the. Uh, it's gone. My little Coleman One Peak. But it's too windy here today, guys, and I just do not have a guard or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to tuck this in here. Hopefully this will just drop in, drop in like this. And we've ploughed that well, butted that well, and we're going to sit this up like this with it. Wash all the yellow water in the outside. Just gonna move the camera around. Yeah, I'll move the camera around here, guys, because I can't move the stove because that's the only way I can get the. Uh... So as you can see, I'm just using one of these cheap stoves. You get them from everywhere: Kmart, Bunnings. You name it, you can get it. You can pay expensive ones. I've only ever used the cheap ones and never had an issue with them. I have had a bit of trouble today lighting it this morning. Like this afternoon, I should say. So we're going to... Ah, we're lit. I'm just going to get the heat on that. Got it going. Going to use the uh, lid. You guys. Yeah, if you're using a camp oven or anything like that, you would of course heat the oven up. These are only aluminium pots, and so this is something that I would do on the side of the road if I um, am camping, uh, when I'm bike touring. So that's why I'm using aluminium pot. I do not want it high because I don't want to burn the shit out of the bottom of my pot, and um, I don't want to burn the damper. So we're going to leave that. We're going to come back and check it, and we're going to see how it goes, guys. And that's dessert tonight, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Well guys, it's been about an hour. It takes a little bit longer in these stoves because you can't, and especially in the aluminium pot, you just can't have it as high as you normally can. In a camp oven, it would take probably 15-20 minutes max. And they do turn it out a little bit different in this. They turn it out more cakey-fied rather than crispy, crunchy damper. But it's still pretty good. And so here we go. Fingers crossed. Turn that off. Take the lid off. Look at cooked. As you can see around the top, it's not as cakey fried. Plus, I found with this though, this gas stove, I had to put a little bit of water in the bottom of it, so it has steamed a little bit more than it has baked. Let's get, give it the stick test now, guys. Yeah, nothing on that, guys. Look at that, come out dry, so that's cooked. warm still and there we go guys not stuck and that's dessert tonight apple and cinnamon damper give it a go it's as simple as can be and it tastes bloody terrific cheers guys